The quickest and easiest way to create levels and scenes is by using procedural components. In this tutorial, we are going to take a look and see how we can create procedural foliage inside Unreal Engine 4. Before going and seeing how we can do that, let me show you a good example of how we can use procedural foliage. So here you can see a small scene with a lot of grass, flowers, some small rocks, but there are no trees. So what I'm going to do is to drag and drop my component inside the scene and I'm going to make sure that this is big enough. So I'm going to put 1000 for every axis and then I'm going to press here Resimulate. Now we will need to wait a little bit because all the trees are going to get placed but after that everything is going to look a lot better because we are going to have the trees that we need in our scene. So as you can see uh, now it's done, it resimulated all the trees and now we have a really nice and dense forest in our scene. And this was all made in something like 10 seconds, 20 seconds, just by using this component. Nothing in here is placed by hand now and everything looks still organic, still natural, just as it should. Before starting, if you want to understand something, let me know down below so I can help you out. As well, if you want to learn more about Unreal Engine 4, both its features and how to recreate mechanics, level design and game development in general, consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any of the upcoming videos. I'm going to start off this tutorial by creating the most simple procedural foliage system that you can do in Unreal Engine 4. So the first thing that we have to do and to make sure that we do is to go into Edit, then go to Project Settings, and then in here we will need to enable an experimental feature. So let's see if we can find it. I'm just going to search here for procedural... Okay, so I don't think it's in here. I think it's in the editor preferences. So let's go to procedural foliage right here in general experimental and under foliage, procedural foliage, make sure that you are going to have this to be true. And perhaps after you enable this, you will need to restart the editor, so make sure that you do that as well. Okay, so now that we have that enabled, let's go in our content browser, go to miscellaneous and create a new procedural foliage spawner. I'm going to call this pine underline pfs from procedural foliage spawner. Let's open this and then create a foliage type by going to miscellaneous once again and a foliage type and I'm going to call this tree ft from foliage type. And the first thing that we need to do in here is to set a mesh. So I'm going to go and see what I have in here, trees and this one. Okay, so I'm going to select it and click on this arrow. Then what we have to do is to select our uh, our foliage type, then go into the spawner, click here on the plus sign and then in this arrow. So we are going to assign to this foliage type the one that we just created. So now this spawner knows that it should uh, spawn these trees. Of course later on we can have multiple foliage types, so we can have multiple types of trees, perhaps we can even add rocks or whatever else we want. Okay, so I think for now this is okay, let's drag the spawner in our world and see if it works. I'm going to make the scale pretty big so it fits a big part of my scene. So let's see. And it should be enough just for demonstration. Then let's go down here and click on Resimulate. Okay, so you can clearly see that these trees now got spawned and they look pretty good. There is a pretty good distance between them, but we can adjust this later on. So now this is basically the, the most simple system that you can do in Unreal Engine 4. But now let's see how we can do something a little bit more complex. Here in our foliage type, the first thing that I'm going to do is to go to placement, then disable the align to normal option. And if these settings seem familiar to you, these are from the foliage tool. Here you can see placement and Align to normal, the one that we just disabled. Then I'm going to close down placement and I'm going to go to procedural. Then let's go to collision and in here for the shade radius, I'm going to set this to 50. And if you don't know what this is, let's read this description. The shade radius determines when two instances overlap. If an instance can grow in the shade, uh, this radius is ignored, right? So this has something to do with the radius around our object and its shade, probably, right? Then let's go to clustering. 
Okay, and here for the num steps we can leave this to 3, but we will need to change the initial seed density. And because I don't want my forest to be too dense, I'm going to set this to be 0 0.4. Okay, then let's close this down and go to growth. And in here we will need to change some things. So first the maximum age, we will need to set this to be 20. Then we can go to procedural scale and in here set what scale we want our trees to be. So here from 1 to 3, I want this to be from 1 to 10. And then we can also change a little bit this right here. We can set this to be automatic so we have a really smooth curve. So now here for the procedural scale, we are going to get uh, the size of the trees is going to vary a little bit more. So let's see how this looks right now. Let's save this and get in our scene the foliage spawner. Okay, and make this just a little bit bigger. Okay, I'm not being able to press on that because I have my foliage type. Okay, now let's go and set the scale to be, let's say 50 little bit too big, 25. I think this is great. Let's re-simulate and now you can see how this looks. Now the forest isn't as dense as it used to be. Let's go back to our procedural, then go to clustering and in here for the initial seed, let's set this back to 1 and see the difference. Okay, let's re-simulate and now you can see the difference. And now let's see what is the difference between the settings that we set here for our procedural scale and maximum age before and after. So let's set the maximum age back to 10 or yeah, 10 the default value. And now the difference might not be too big, let's see. So simulating, you can see these trees are now a lot bigger and these are now a lot smaller. So the difference isn't that big, but it's still noticeable. Then let's go back in our type and set the maximum scale to three the default value and let's see how this looks now. So you can see the size difference. It was right here at the top before and now it's they're pretty small, not too big. So I'm going to put those back to 10 and the age, so maximum age back to 20. Okay, okay, I'm going to close both of these down now and also close the procedural. Let's save and let's resimulate once again. Okay. So actually what we could do is to go back to our initial growth here, so from 10 to 20, okay. We simulate, so now these are once again bigger. And also let's not keep the density to 1, I think that's a little bit too much. So we can go to clustering once again, set the initial seed density to 0 0.6, that should be just great. And let's also try to change the num step. Let's set this to 1, just to see the difference, to show you how flexible this is. Let's re-simulate, and now you can see that the density is not that big, not at all. If I'm going to change this back to 3, you're going to be able to see the difference in density, so this also really influences how much, uh, the, how big the force is going to be. So you can clearly see just how big it is with 3 and how big it is with 1. Okay, now let's close down our tree type. We are just going to close this down. And also our foliage spawner. And let's duplicate our tree foliage type. Okay. And what I'm going to do for this one is to change the static mesh. Okay. And now let's also change some values in here. Let's say the line to normal to be true. And the line max angle to be 5. Let's close this down. And for procedural collision, I'm going to set this to be, let's say, 100, back to the default value. The num step is going to be 2. Initial seed density, 0 0.5. Maximum age, let's say 15. Maximum growth, let's see, I think 10 would be a great value. Let's save, close this down. Let's go back to our procedural foliage spawner and create a new foliage type. Then let's get the second uh, type we just created. Select it, click on the arrow, save, and now let's recipulate this forest and see how it is going to look. Okay. 
So now you can't really see the difference between the trees. So let's try another mesh, something with snow on it. Okay, let's save. Let's wait for the shaders to compile a little bit. But you can definitely see that these were the trees uh, before, the ones with this shade, because this is compiling right now. So let's wait just a second. But in the meantime, what I want to change is the shade radius. Let's make this smaller because you can see that these trees are really close to each other, which is not good. So I'm going to set this to be 20. And then I'm going to set I'm going to set the num step to be 4. Save. And now let's re-simulate. Okay, so now you can clearly see the difference between the trees. But I feel like this is too small, so let's make the foliage spawner a little bit bigger. Set the scale to 60. Re-simulate. Okay. And also change both densities to 0 0.4 and 0 0.3. Okay, yeah, let's just simulate one more time. And this is how our forest looks. Right, we have these big trees, and then we have the snow, and we can go through here, but still not really that playable. But here is where Epic made a tool to be able to remove some of the foliage where we don't want it. So in order to do that, what you'll need to do is to go here to search classes and get a, so let's see, procedural. So procedural foliage blocking volume. Let's drag one of these in our scene. And now this is basically just the same volume as the spawner. But what we can do with this is to scale it however you want. We can just scale this on the X axis. And set this to be 100. Okay, then we can make this to be a little bit bigger on the Z axis. So let's say 50. And then on the Y axis, what we can do is to set this to be 20. Okay, so now you will be able to clearly see the cut in our forest once we are going to re-simulate. So let's go to our pine forest and click on re-simulate. And now we can clearly see where the path has been made. Right, so here is where our procedural blocking volume is. And we can move this and play around. What we can do with it is to scale a little bit, a little bit more down. So 15, make this 15. Okay, make it even slimmer. Let's say 5. And what we can do is to copy this multiple times and make here two paths. So we can have it this way. Okay, and then we can copy this and have it the other way around. Okay, and now let's go and re-simulate once again. And you can see where these intersect, right, and where the trees are not spawned. And this is the way you can easily create procedural um, forests, and you can just press re-simulate as many times as you want. Of course, there won't be too many changes when we are going to press re-simulate, right? Sometimes it won't even work. But of course, if you change some of the values in here, you'll definitely be able to do some cool stuff with this. And I even have a demonstrator for this. So not only the one that I showed you in the beginning, but I also have one right here. Okay, so let's see if I can find it. So it's right here. The one that I showed you in the last video as well. Okay, let's see. And this, the entire thing right here is procedural. There's nothing made by hand besides the landscape that was painted and uh, sculpted by me. But the rest, these trees, these rocks, even these small plants right here, these small trees and branches, and whatever is in here, it's all procedural. Of course, the lighting and the post process is made by me. This is really hard to get procedural. But of course you can also do that with some random numbers. But literally everything else in here is made procedural and nothing is placed by hand. So this is actually the power of procedural components, especially foliage, which can get to look really nice and organic. So there's, you know, there's not that big of a difference between 
you painting them by hand and the procedural compon component making it automatically. Because in most games, the player won't even be able to notice, and the effort you put in there is so minimal and so easy to make it, that it's really a thing that everyone should be using for levels, unless it's something that you really, you really need to be able to work with, to manipulate however you want it, to place them manually, then yeah, do not use this. And of course, if you want to ship your games, to build these and let others play them, be careful because this is an experimental feature, so you might have some problems with it. I highly recommend you wait until this gets out of experimental and see whether it's safe or not to ship your game using this. And that concludes today's video. I hope that you found this tutorial helpful and informative and if you haven't understood something, let me know down below so I can help you out. As well, if you want to learn more about Unreal Engine 4, both its features and how to recreate mechanics, level design and game development in general, consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any of the upcoming videos. As well, if you want to support me, you can do that over on Patreon for as little as $1 and there you can get access to all the project files from the past tutorials and of course the upcoming tutorials. And of course, by supporting me, I'm going to be able to improve the quality of my tutorials so everyone can learn really good and really fast. That being said, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.